Welcome to Photoscape. Photoscape is a fully functional photo editing software that's perfect for paranormal photograph analysis. It has tons of great features, and best of all, now it's yours for free. So feel free to install it on as many computers as you would like. Everyone on your team should have this software. Everyone on our team does. If you haven't installed it yet, refer to the web address included in this DVD. If you're ready, let's get started. Step 1. Opening the editor. When you open Photoscape, this is what it will look like. Now this tutorial is specifically for paranormal investigation photograph analysis, and that's what we're going to be using it for. So if you notice to the right, you're going to see a little Photoscape logo, and you're going to see a circle of several different options surrounding it. What we're concentrating on is the photo editor. So if you go to the top, you're going to double click on that, and it's going to pull up your photo editor. Step 2. Finding your photos. When you open your photo editor, this is what it will look like. If you look here to the left, you may already notice that you have some photographs that are already visible. If your photographs are on a memory card or a USB device, I would recommend go ahead and transfer those to your computer because it's going to make this process a whole lot easier. Now if you look here to the top, you're going to see several different folders that your photographs may be in. So what we want to do is search through, find the photograph we want to open. Now I know that the photograph I want to open for this demonstration is under false anomalies. So I'm going to find that folder, click on it, it's going to show me those photos, and then I'm going to double click and open the photograph that we want to analyze. Step 3. Making adjustments. When analyzing a potential paranormal photograph, we don't want to go overboard with adjustments. So I'm going to show you how to make three basic adjustments. I'm going to show you brightness, zoom, and crop. The first we're going to talk about is brightness. Now there are a couple ways to adjust this. Probably the simplest way is to go down here to the bottom where you see all of these little bars. Go to where it says backlight and click that one time. As you can see, it's brightened up our image. If it's not quite bright enough, you can click on that and do it again and again until you get the desired effect. Now if we're not happy with this and we want to start all over, we can go here to the right where it says undo. Clicking that one time will undo your most recent adjustment. Clicking undo all will take you back to the original photo. The second thing we're going to learn is how to zoom in and out of our image. Now we use this when we want to get a closer look at something. So if we go here to this little bar, we're going to look to the right and we see a little magnifying glass with a plus and a minus. Now the plus is going to zoom us in and the minus is going to take us out. Now if we've zoomed in and we want to concentrate on a specific area, you're going to see a little box right here. Now if we take our little hand and press the left mouse button, we're going to be able to grab that and drag it and move it around as we feel necessary. Now we're going to zoom back out to the original photo. Now let's say our anomaly is right here and that's what we want to cut out. I'm going to show you how to crop and it's very simple. If we go here to the left, we're going to see where it says Home, Object, Crop, and Tools. We're going to click Crop. Now this is going to allow us to crop our image. Now we want to start up here in this area and press the left mouse button. And as we drag that mouse button down and over, it's going to let us cut that image out. So we release our mouse button. If we're not satisfied with this, we can drag it by using the same left mouse button and moving it around as big as we would like. Once we've done that, we can click Crop. Now we have cropped our image. Step 4. Watermark. Anytime we publicly present a photo for peer review or analysis, we want to make sure that photograph is protected and there's an easy way to identify us as the owners of the photograph. So I'm going to show you how to make a quick and easy watermark that's going to help identify your photographs. Now if you go here to the bottom, you're going to see this bar that we used before where it says Home, Object, Crop, and Tools, and we're going to go here and click Object. Now here on the left, we see a little photo here, and then we see a T below that. The T is for text, so we're going to click on that, and it's going to give us an opportunity to add some text. 
So we're going to put in whatever we would like. In this case, we're going to put our photo. I would recommend using your team's name because we want people to identify the owners of the photograph. So you use whatever you would like to identify the photo as. Now you want to make sure that you can see this. So you want a color that's going to be different from the color of the photograph. So if the photo is a dark color, you want to make your text a light color and vice versa. And once we're happy with what we've got here, we can go to text and adjust the font if we would like, but we're going to leave it the same to save a little bit of time. And we're going to click OK. Now we're going to be able to adjust the size of this. We can make it smaller or we can make it larger. And once we've got our size down, we can take this and bring it to the bottom of the photo or the top of the photo, or you can stick it in the middle. It doesn't really matter. Just make sure you're not covering up your anomaly. So once we've got our photograph protected, we're going to move on to our next step. Step five, saving your photo. Now that our photo is analyzed, adjusted, and watermarked for our protection, it's time to save our photo. Now this is a very important process. Please do this exactly how I'm showing you. You're going to go here to the lower right hand corner and click save. Now once you click save, you may want to run up here and click save up here really quickly, but you need to refrain from doing that. You need to go here and click save as. This is why. If you were to click save, you're going to completely erase the original photo. When we present photographs that may be paranormal, we must, must, must present the original along with that. So we're going to go here and click save as and it's going to take us to our library. Now you can put this in whatever library you like. We're going to call this Our Photo 2. We're going to select our image type. I recommend JPEG. We're going to click Save. Now we want to keep this in the highest quality possible. So we're going to take this all the way to the right at 100% and we're going to click OK. Now our photograph is saved and we still have our original photograph to present as well. Now I'm sure you've noticed down here at the bottom there are lots of different effects that we haven't gone through and there's a reason for that. When we're analyzing paranormal photographs we don't want to make a lot of adjustments. We want to make this as easy and as simple as possible because altering the photo it's going to lose its credibility. So you want to make sure and don't make too many adjustments. Now you may want to take a little bit of time to learn these effects because you can do great things with this outside of the paranormal. But these are the basic effects and adjustments that we use and I hope this was helpful. This is our Photoscape tutorial. Welcome to WavePad Sound Editor. There are several programs available for EVP analysis. Some are very costly and some are free. We are only using basic features, so in our case, WavePad is perfect for EVP analysis. Everyone on our team uses this program and I encourage your team to do the same. If you have not installed it, please refer to the link we have provided. Make sure you click the link that says download the free version here. If you're ready, let's get started. Step 1. Opening your files. When you open WavePad Sound Editor, this is what it will look like. The first thing you need to do is connect your USB digital voice recorder to your computer. You may need to install some drivers. If so, this will only take a second and it should do it automatically. If your device is ready, you go to the upper left hand corner where you see File and you're going to click that. And you're going to scroll down to Open File. If your files are already on the computer, you simply go to those and click to open. If not, you need to go down to Computer double click that and then you're going to go to your voice recorder you can double click that select the folder that your voice recorder file is in click that and then double click on the file and it will open it just like this step two basic controls the basic controls for wavepad sound editor are very simple for EVP analysis if you go to the lower left hand corner you're going to see a bar here with several buttons. The one to the left shaped like a triangle is your play button. If you move three over you're going to see a little square. This is your stop. Right next to that if you click this it'll take you back to the beginning of your file. 
If you go all the way over, this will take you to the very end of your file. If you move over here to the right, you're going to see a little slidable bar here. Sliding this to the right will zoom in your track as little or as much as you would like. If you place your cursor somewhere in the waveform and click the left mouse button, you'll be able to start playing from that exact point. So let's go back to the beginning and play the entire file. Welcome to the WavePad tutorial. Step 3. Isolate. As you're listening to your recordings, when you hear something you believe could be a possible EVP, you need to immediately stop the recording and write that time down. Once you've went through the entire recording, it's time to go back and isolate those individual pieces of audio to see if you have captured EVP. This is how you're going to do that. When you find the spot where your possible EVP is located, you want to go about five seconds before that and press the left mouse button and keep it held in and you're going to scroll about five seconds after that. Now let's play that and see what we have. Pad tutorial. Okay, now we're going to right click this and go to copy. Once we've copied, we're going to go up here to the upper left hand corner to file we're going to click New File, and we're going to click OK, and these are going to keep the settings just as they were. Once this new box opens up, we're going to right click here, and we're going to press Paste. And we have successfully isolated that recording. Step 4, Making Adjustments. Now let's make some adjustments to see if we can identify what we have recorded. If you go here to the lower right hand corner, you're going to grab your zoom bar and you're going to slide it all the way to the left. Now this is going to zoom our track out. And then we're going to start this track from the beginning and we're going to play. Pad tutorial. Let's play that one more time. Pad tutorial. Okay, somewhere in this area we seem to have captured some type of a voice. So we're going to re-isolate this section. So we're going to go just to the beginning of it. We're going to left click and we're going to scroll to the right and we're going to release that mouse. And let's play it and see what we have. Okay, we can clearly hear there's a, some type of a voice here, but we can't quite make it out. So let's make a few simple adjustments so we can better understand what our EVP is saying. We're going to go here to the upper left hand corner to where we see effects and we're going to click that. Now the first thing we're going to do is we're going to amplify this recording to see if we can maybe make out what it's saying by doing that simple adjustment. So we're going to scroll down to amplify and you have several presets you can select from quarter volume, half volume, double volume, triple volume. Now triple volume seems to be a pretty good selection so we're going to try that and we're going to press apply. Now let's press play and see what we have. Now that's much clearer. We can almost make out some words in here, but not quite. So we're going to make a second adjustment. Now these are the only two adjustments I recommend making to any EVP file. If you're over enhancing, essentially what you're doing is ruining your original file. So we're only going to be adjusting the volume and adjusting the speed just a little bit. So let's go up here to the upper left hand corner and click effects. Now let's scroll down to speed change. Now make sure you're on speed change not speed and pitch change otherwise your your EVP will sound very funny. So let's click that. First we're gonna start we're gonna start at about 84 percent. So you just use the slide bar or you can click up and down and to preview this we're gonna click play. Okay, let's slow it down just a little bit more. I can almost make something out here. Let's slow it down to about 60% and listen very closely. Now with those simple adjustments, we have been able to pull out this EVP. Let's click apply. Now let's play the file.
the EVP file clearly says, can you hear what I'm saying? Step 5. Saving the file. Now when we save our files, we need to save them original without any type of enhancements. So what we're going to do is remove those enhancements by going up here to the upper left hand corner. We're going to click edit. We're going to go to undo speed change. We're going to click edit one more time and we're going to undo amplify. Now you may be wondering why we isolated so much of the file if we were only concerned with a couple seconds. Well here's why. Anytime you are presenting an EVP file for analysis you need to include 5 to 10 seconds before the anomaly and 5 to 10 seconds after the anomaly so the people listening can get a better feel of what's going on while the EVP was captured. Once we've done that we're going to go back to the beginning and make sure this is the file that we want to save. That tutorial and that's it that's the original file so let's go up here to file go to save as it's very important to go to save as we're gonna click that we're gonna save our file under evidence and we're gonna save it as EVP1 we're gonna click save and make sure you're saving this as a WAV file and we're gonna click OK and we've saved that just as we recorded it. Now we need to go back and save the entire original file. So we're going to X out of this. Make sure this is the file that we're looking for. Welcome to the WavePad tutorial. Okay, that's it. Now let's save this entire file. So we're going to do the exact same thing that we did for the isolated portion. We're going to go here to File. We're going to go to Save As once again and we're going to call this investigation one we're going to save it as a WAV file click save just as we did before click OK and that's it that's how we use WavePad for EVP analysis